Uh, hello everyone, I'm Zeppanella with DualShockers.com and I'm here with Susan Calloway, which is the, sa the songstress behind Answers and Dragon Song, the two, the two team songs of uh, Final Fantasy XIV, uh, A Realm Reborn, and Final Fantasy XIV, um, Heaven Sword. And uh, she sang a lot in, uh, in um, um, Distant Words, the series of concerts Square Enix is doing for Final Fantasy Lower the World. And uh, she has an awesome voice, as you'll be able to hear during th this process. So thank you very much, Susan, for uh, giving us a little bit of your time and uh, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, so let's, let's dive right away into it. First of all, uh, can you tell a little bit about yourself and your career? I introduced you, you a little bit, but me, probably you introducing yourself is much better. <laughs> sure, I'd be happy to. Um, I'm a singer-songwriter. I've been, you know, I've been a musician my whole entire life. I started playing pl uh, piano when I was five, and uh, I've been singing since I was, about, I was about nine. And I've been writing music and singing and performing my own music since I was about 12 years old. So I started really young. And it's a huge part of my life and who I am. And I've done a lot of touring and things like that through my life. I was the lead singer of a really big band here in the United States that did quite well. And since then, have gone on my own to kind of start a solo career. And it was kind of during that period of my life that I met uh, Arnie Roth and Nobu Umatsu. And it was a great thing when we met because uh, my voice kind of fit what they were looking for. They were looking for a singer to work on these audio CDs for Distant Worlds. And we did, that's kind of was my first experience working on Final Fantasy music. And uh, it went over so well and the fans liked it so well that I was invited to come to some of the concerts. And that went so well that I just started to um, kind of build a relationship with a lot of the fans. And it kind of kind of snowballed from there leading up to me being asked to sing actually on the game for Final Fantasy XIV. And as we all know, I've done two songs now for Final Fantasy XIV, which is awesome. And who knows, maybe there'll be more, you never know. So that's sort of a Final Fantasy, how I got involved story. <laughs> so, uh, Well, uh, of course, as I always say, your, uh, your two songs for Final Fantasy XIV are Answers and the Dragon Song. Uh, I know it, it may be a little unfair to ask. It's pretty much like asking a mother uh, which one is the favorite between the two ch uh, her two children. But uh, right. do you have a favorite between them? And if yes, why? Um, well, I really like Answers. I think um, I really enjoyed working on uh, the version I just released, the artist version that's that's out um, in particular, because I think Answers has such a powerful message. I mean, I think Dragon Song does too, but it's... Um, answers kind of runs the whole gamut of style. Like there's these small moments and there's these big moments. Um, so it's, and it's not easy to sing. It's a long piece, you know? Oh, yeah. um, but I do like Dragon Song too. They're, it's hard to compare them. They're very different songs, yes. you know? Um, and really my fi my favorite Final Fantasy song is is Kiss Me Goodbye. <laughs> oh, well, that, <laughs> that's, that's, that's an easy really one to have as a favorite, right? It, it, so it really beautiful. isn't. You know, you know why? Because it's really the most like a, just um, an American pop song. And, and I relate to it more from that mm -hmm. standpoint. You know, these other songs are so um, theatrical and involved um, in kind of their whole structure, you know, so they're, it's a little different format. You know, it's, it's one I'm less familiar with. So I think Kiss Me Goodbye was one of those songs that I immediately knew vocally what I wanted to do and how I wanted to sing it. Um, and these other songs took a little more work, you know, to figure out, like, how will this work and what's the best approach vocally to make this song powerful. And um, But they're both excellent pieces of music. I mean, I love Nobu and I love, you know, his sense of melody is just incredible. So I think we all agree on that. Mm -hmm. uh, you, uh, you just said uh, you recently released Answer, the artist cut. And uh, yep. we hear a lot of director Scott, you know, N not very much about artist Scott. <laughs> uh, so this is actually very interesting for, for, for me. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the project, a little bit more in depth and how it came to be? Sure. Well, I've had a lot of fans ask for many months now, you know, if I was going to be releasing, you know, like my versions of some of these songs. And so it seemed like now that I've, I'm kind of part of the community, it was a, the right time to do that. And, so what I wanted to do as an artist, because I am a writer and a producer and songwriter, I didn't want to just refurbicate something that's already out there, you know, because that didn't seem important. You know, I mean, we have the version that's on the game. We have the audio version that's on the CD that Distant Worlds, you know, put out. 
Um, and it's it just seemed, you know, redundant for me to do another version that was trying to be exactly like that. So I thought, well, what is a different approach I could take to the song? And as I reflected on what answers means and what it means to me, I really, I wanted to do something that was a little more reflective, a little more ethereal, a little more kind of almost soulful or spiritual, like that kind of approach to the song, because I think that is also answers, you know, I think it also tells the story. Yeah. And I think, I mean, this was, it's almost like when I was working on the arrangement for the song, I was almost thinking about how you feel like after the war, when you're by yourself, you know, and you're just having to take in all these things that have just happened and you're feeling maybe emotional and maybe like, well, what do I do now? It's kind of like any, any time we go through a tragedy, like when we first have to deal with something hard, we fight really hard and we're not even really thinking about how we feel because we're just so in the moment of the battle. But then there's that time after we're not fighting anymore, but we have to really kind of deal with everything that's just happened and go, well, wow, like what just happened and, and what do I do now? And I was really trying to capture that feeling, which is a little more personal, a little more lonely, a little more, you know, reflective. Mm-hmm. So that's what we were trying to do. So hopefully we accomplished that. <laughs> yeah, it's great. I heard about I heard it. And I love it. Thank uh, you. With Answer the Dragon song, you worked with the title of video game composition, which is going to be Nobu Ematsu. So how, how, how was it? How, how is Uematsu as a, as a scene from, like, uh, from up close? Well, I, I love Nobu. He is so, he's such a sweet person. He's just so kind and so sweet. And I appreciate that about him. You know, there's not a pretentious bone in his body. You know, he's not arrogant at all, which he certainly could be. Um, and he's so down to earth and he really, one of the reasons I enjoy working with him and why I would always say yes if he asked me to work with him on something is that he really cared about um, me bringing my own artistry to it. He actually is a fan of my music as well. And um, actually when we did a show in Los Angeles a few years ago, I had a concert there before the Final Fantasy show a couple days earlier and he came, <laughs> which is really fun. Um, but he's a real, um, he's a real champion of other artists and he really cared that I was bringing my own artistry to his music, which I love that he does, does that. It shows how genuine he is in his art. You know, he's very collaborative. He's not, um, He's not, I mean, some artists would work on something and they think, well, it has to be just like this and you have to sing it exactly this way. And he wasn't so much that way. He, uh, he really wanted me to bring my own interpretation. He's very loose that way. Like he just wanted it to be great. He wanted it to be soulful. And, and he feels the same way about as I sing live concerts, you know, with the game. I mean, any of the songs that he's written, he really wants me to just put my whole style into it. If I want to change the melody a little bit here and there or whatever. I mean, he's really, he actually likes that. So mm-hmm. I love that about him. And he's just, and he's a really fun guy too. He's got a great sense of humor, super laid back, very funny. I mean, there's a lot of laughing backstage. I mean, there's been times where we were laughing so hard. I'm like, look, we have to stop because I have to go out and (laughs) sing because he's so funny, you know, and he's just so, um, he's just a, a delightful person. Well, you know, it, really it does look quite a, quite a lot like a carrier. <laughs> yeah, he really is. I mean, he's just a, he's very he's very very pleasant to work with. So yeah, he looks like a very very pleasant person. I actually met him really briefly myself a long oh, awesome. time ago. Yeah, but, but it was so brief. So uh, it's really nice to to hear someone that worked in so, so for such a long time. Right. Um, did working on Final Fantasy fourteen and Distant Worlds spark any interest in video games in you? It definitely does. I mean, I think the biggest thing that's made me really want to check out Final Fantasy more is just the passion that the fans have for the game. I mean, it's it's really I've never seen anything like it. Um, I mean, it's definitely you can tell that Final Fantasy has successfully created this amazing subculture, you know, of of people of that really. Yeah, that really just are really into this whole world and this whole dynamic. And I think it's, I think it's awesome. It's really cool. I mean, the only thing that has been my hesitancy to get involved with it more is just time. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> Cause I just, I work a lot. I'm working on a full length CD to be out this fall. I'm actually um, working on a book as well. And I've, I've got a, a lot of on my plate right now. And I just, I know that role playing games are so time consuming and I'm, I'm a little afraid cause I'm afraid I'll, if I do start, I'll just get sucked in and I won't get any of my work done. <laughs> so Ah. Well, yeah. you should, you, maybe you should try the, the offline versions that are a little bit less like addictive. <laughs> really? Okay. That's good advice. I'll try. I know I always joke with the fans that we should do a Google Hangout and you guys can all make fun of me while I try to learn how to play because I'm sure I'll be just a they're great... They're not difficult game. games. <laughs> they're not? No, they're not. 
so uh, speaking still about video games, uh, what do you think of video game music in general? Is it a field you're interested in working more in, even maybe outside of the Final Fantasy series? I definitely would. I think, you know, what's interesting is um, video games have really changed the industry, like even the music industry, because there's so, there's so many young kids, even now they're like 10, 11 years old, that that's how they're finding music now is through video games. So absolutely, I would love to do more with it just to be able to connect with more people because I love how video games, because of the storylines in a video game, I love how that connects music and how it it almost makes the songs mean more because they of where they appear in the game. They kind of, you know, they kind of give a more, yeah, of course, um, yeah, of course. they make a powerful connection with your audience. And I think that's, as an artist, you're always trying to think about that of how can I make this a better connection with my music, you know, with people and make, you know, take them on this journey with me in this song. I mean, that's, that's something I hugely care about when I write music. So a video game sort of helps that process along, you know, and I really, I think that's awesome. And I, yeah, I'd love to do it. So. <laughs> we actually see, you know, we actually see a lot of uh, singers that uh, sing uh, like video game music and then expand a little bit into doing voice work in them and even acting. Is it something you would like to do or it, you would, would you prefer to like stick to music? Well, that's a good question. I mean, I do do some voice acting now for some different things. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't done anything for a video game yet, but I've done some stuff for like commercials and uh -huh. some movie stuff, things like that. But I um, haven't done a video game yet, so we'll see. But I'm certainly open to it. I mean, look, if it's creative, anything that's creative where you can connect with people and stuff, I think is fun. And I'm, I'm pretty up... I'm pretty much up for whatever the opportunity is, you know. I mean, I certainly wouldn't just do anything, but mm -hmm. I'm very open. <laughs> Let's leave it at that. I'm very open to <laughs> whatever. What's your favorite moment in in your time with Final Fantasy during the Distant World concert, concert or maybe during recording, things like that? Do you have any like mm. moment any like even a funny anecdote or anything you can share that you really that really stuck with you well there's been quite a few i mean obviously the live performances are wonderful and the fans are so appreciative and generous which i so appreciate i mean i've had so many artists that have noticed how i just get like no negative feedback or comments for the most part i mean there's every once in a while you'll get some kind of mm -hmm. nutty person that says something but for the most part, you know, because usually that's kind of the hard part of an artist is that, you know, there's people that like you and then there's always going to be that person that hates you for some reason. Yeah. And I'm so fortunate. I don't really have a lot of that. So I feel really blessed for that. And the fans have made this so such a special experience. And I think if anything stands out in my mind, aside from just the energy at the live shows, which is seems to always be there, is, um, I mean, obviously it was a real thrill to play Royal Albert Hall. That was awesome because that's such a legendary concert hall so that was quite thrilling um but one of the things that was amazing is when i went to japan mm -hmm. um, especially this last time it was last january not this january but the year before mm -hmm. we went to do a series of concerts there and um meeting some of the fans after the show we did a meet and greet and you know answers has now been out for you know a few years and stuff and i had never sung answers in this environment where i did a meet and greet with them and and it was my first time doing that and they were so like moved and appreciative. I mean, they were like, many of them were like even crying when they met me because they were like, answers just mean so much to me. And I was, it just really touched me. It like made me cry because I'm like, wait, stop crying. We're all going to be crying. But it was, it was really, um, I was really touched by that, that the song had connected with them in such a deep way. And I was very, very humbled and flattered by it. And I just, it, it was one of those moments in your career where you go, man, this is, you know, this is why you do it, you know, it's for this right here, just to make that connection. So. It was very special. Yeah, it's actually a great thing. I, I I've spoke with quite a few singers in the past, and they all tell me that their most special moments are about like connecting with people that listen to yeah. the song. And I think you know, video games let you connect even more maybe than yeah than uh, normal music like uh, pop music or anything like that because they they actually have a story that's like more evident behind. It. Most music right. has a story behind it, even if it's right. not like told. But video games actually tell you that story, and, and exactly. you're like really connected. Even Dragon Song, uh, and uh, if you think like Final Fantasy fourteen as 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 a little bit of a like um, shaky story behind it, because right. the first game wasn't very successful, right? And that was followed by the second game and. Square Enix pretty much brought us on a, on a, on a like on a on a track on a, like on a on a journey 
uh, we I, I don't know if you're aware of this, but they actually made a big quest line behind uh, uh, the fall of the world in the fir first game. So when uh, the second game, when the, the trailer of the second game came up with, tr with answers on it, uh, I know I cried. Yeah. And I know I'm not the only one. <laughs> because we, I know, it we, was, we lived it. It was, it was really powerful how they made that connection because, you know, when we originally did the track, we didn't know what was going, what, you know, what it was going to be shown against, you know, like what the visual mm -hmm. was going to be. And so when I, when we saw that second trailer, I was like, wow, like the, I don't, it was one of those things I think that nobody planned on it connecting so beautifully and it did. And it was like, it was very magical, you know, yeah, what we, happened. We lived it. We lived that story like, uh, and more PG players, especially when they are a little bit more into role play, like mm -hmm. they, they are. Uh, they connect very much with the story of the world and with the world itself, and that's that song was like so connected with the story we played and with the world itself that, like, I know I cried. I know yeah. other people that cried, <laughs> and uh, and we all cried. Well, we all cried together. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. There was a lot of Kleenex going around. Oh right? yeah, definitely. <laughs> uh, another thing that I wanted to ask you is, uh, uh, did you have like any? like a uh, uh, difficult moment uh, we talk about the happy moments and the special moments uh, was there like any any difficult moment of working on uh, on the final fantasy series um i think one of the difficult moments i don't even remember which concert this was but there was a concert that i was really um i was really really ill actually i think it was in new york and i had we had just gotten back from japan it was one of those experiences mm -hmm. Um, and I was really sick, like, and I, there wasn't really a way to get out of it, you know, and I, and I love doing shows, but obviously if you have like the flu or something, that's not something you want to do. <laughs> and I went and did the concert anyway. And that was really difficult. Cause I just, I remember being on stage and just saying a prayer, like, God help me get through this. Cause <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to sing this song. Cause I had no voice. It was like, Oh, it was really, that wasn't uh, the easiest thing. So yeah. And, that... and, and songs and the songs you sing in, in the kind of concert aren't, aren't exactly easy too. No, they're not. That's what, and that was really, I have, I definitely had to make some spur of the moment, uh, decisions vocally on like, well, I don't think I'm going to go for that note tonight. Yeah, they, they have a very, <laughs> like, go. a big extension, <laughs> like they have a very big vocal extension. They go from, from yeah, very no, low to very high. Oh, definitely. Definitely. But, and thankfully I, I, you know, I do take really good care of myself. I mean, I look at my body as an instrument, so I really try to, you know, I work out a lot. I eat really healthy. I mean, I really try to you know, do what I can, but you know, you still get sick once in a while. So that's of when course. it's the show must go on, you know? So there is another thing I wanted to ask you. So you told me that they asked you to, to, to sing answers. Uh, yes. how did it go? Like, uh, how did they approach you? Uh, do you remember exactly how, how it went? Like they, they went through your, uh, manager or directly to you, or can you tell us a little bit more the story about it? Like the backstory? Sure. Well, you know, it wasn't, it actually isn't, uh, it's kind of an anticlimactic story in a way, because it was really a very simple conversation. I mean, Arnie, Arnie Roth, who is, produces a lot of this music for, you know, Naboo and the concerts and things like that, he actually is the one that, you know, called me and said, hey, this is, you know, no, they've asked Naboo to do this new theme song and he wants you to sing it, you know, so... Um, I said, sure. <laughs> Maybe you didn't so, even imagine it was that big when, when, when it started. Oh, yeah, no, we didn't. I didn't. I mean, I was real flattered. I knew being on the game would be really a nice honor, and it was definitely something that would be a, a great thing to do. So I, um, but no, none, I don't think any of us knew that the song, because I mean, I agreed to sing it even before I heard it. So, I mean, it, you know, obviously a lot of things could have gone wrong in that process, and it, and it didn't. And, you know, there's, there's a fair amount of back and forth. I mean, deciding on like what key and, um, you know, that was kind of after I said yes, that was kind of the next thing was to demo it out and pick a key and things like that. Cause that's the hard thing is finding a key that's going to work. Cause it was such a big vocal number, you know, of course. So, uh, do you have any, any favorite part of the song? Like it's, it's a song that has very different parts. It's like kind of yeah, like a, kind of, kind of modular, I would, I would almost say. So do you have any favorite part of it? Any part that you have that you actually have a, a fun singing? Yeah, I like, well, you know, I really like the front of it. At the front of it and the end of it, like those, those, uh, you know, that two, all of my children. I love that part. Yeah. I love the beginning of it and just that whole section. And that's why, like, on the version that I do, my Susan version, the artist version, I 
we uh we did a really fun vocal arrangement there we kept it almost like almost Enya or something like we did a whole like you know I really wanted to make that magical you know how we opened the song you know and I I love how that sounds you know I was really happy with that and I that's one of the reasons we kind of highlighted that you know it's that very part. soulful yeah like it's it's it, it, it has a very strong initial impact for me like yes when it, it hits you immediately and that's something that many songs like start a little subdued you know right this one hits you right away and that, that's what i really love about it but anyway awesome. yeah that that's 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 one of my favorite songs in video game even if still i have to admit right. the dragon awesome. song is still my favorite <laughs> that's, that's okay you can dragon song's a good one too and ai sing it so you're allowed to have that as your favorite <laughs> well uh, it has a, it has a little bit of a special meaning for me i, I won't say sure. why but it does uh, right. i hear you that's anyway, great yeah uh well that, that's another one that also besides the special meaning that it has for me which is very personal um uh i don't know if you probably saw that the trail the initial trailer that's also a big kind of rite of passage for for final fantasy 14 players right. because uh, the story before it finishes in a very dramatic note mm -hmm. and it comes back and you are like a, an outcast mm -hmm. uh, that's finding a new home in that in in that point in the story so sure. if you are involved with the story it's 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 very soulful it's very strong sure it's a beautiful number, you know, and who knows, maybe we'll do, I've already had fans asking if I was going to do a version of that. So, well, who knows, like we, <laughs> we may end up with a whole record full of Susan versions of some of these things. So I'd be okay with that. <laughs> Could you handle that? Oh yeah, I'd buy it. Probably. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Well, we, we, we're releasing singles. So it's like, again, if enough fans, you know, buy it and are interested, you know, we'll see how it goes. Cause a lot of it's just, you know, it's obviously I'm doing this all on my own right now. So we do mm -hmm. have some things bubbling around that could lead to some getting some assistance but uh we'll see yeah, uh, what's the what, what's square Inc's involvement with the with your version of answers like they 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 work with you or they just say do what you want um they pretty much they haven't really been involved with it i mean they certainly i had to get the rights to do the song you of know course. from their publisher so i did that and everything but and they know about it i mean they're i have a real open relationship with them um, they're very supportive. They've made it clear they want to do everything they can to support me, but there hasn't, there's no official partnership as far as moving forward. I mean, that's something that could happen, but at this point, um, they support me doing this, but that's, you know, that's not like they're not re-releasing it on their label or anything like that at this point. So it's kind of still my own my own release at this point, yeah. but they are, you know, I have a great relationship with them and they're very appreciative of what I've contributed and, you know, yeah. so... I, I will I, I, I will tell you I'm not it just came to out flatter you but I wouldn't I, I certainly wouldn't be unhappy to to hear a, a, a song by you on in Final Fantasy 15 oh thanks oh. well I I would love to do it it will depend on you know I mean obviously I, I I mean I'm just glad I got to do two songs I don't think there's a whole lot of singers that have done more than one that I know of but mm -hmm. I don't know I mean I know they've done so many games it's hard to know <laughs> <laughs> Well, if, you, if if it's not gonna work in fifteen, or it's still sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, sure. nineteen, like it's it's been yeah. going on for for decades. So you know there is right. always a chance, right? Right, exactly. Well, and they might do more extensions of fourteen too. That's of course, what I yeah. I've they, they're heard. They're definitely you know? gonna do it. That, that, yeah, that's for sure. And I think I, that's probably my best chance of doing another song is is gonna be another for another version in fourteen. Just because I'm kind of become a part of fourteen in a way, you know, now that I've done two songs. So, mm -hmm. but who knows, you know. Uh, your uh, answers has, has been used in Final Fantasy XIV, like little snippets of it have been used in other musical, in other music of the, of the game. Have mm -hmm. you actually worked uh, in any uh, capacity with the other com big composer of Final Fantasy XIV, which is Masayaki Soken? No, I met them in, uh, when I was in Japan. We had a really nice conversation. I met them at an after party, actually. Um, and they're really great people, really sweet. Um, but no, we we have not like worked together on the song. I mean, they were in the room. I believe they were involved when we were recording, but it's hard to tell because I was, we recorded the songs for the game on Skype at Arnie Roth studio in Chicago. And so, you know, they were all like teeny tiny. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't even see who was in the room. And then I was trying to concentrate on what I was doing. I wasn't, you know, I was kind of letting Arnie manage that. And you know what I mean? Cause there's just so much to think about. So I wasn't really, I don't remember who was in the room for what part. And cause they were, again, they were just teeny tiny pictures on the screen. Wait, 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 wait. Now, now this is actually interesting, like <laughs> from a technical point of view. 
you actually can record songs on Skype? Well, we didn't record it. It wasn't like we were recording on Skype. What we did is we were doing the session live, but they were listening in on Skype. Ah, okay. So I was like, like, really? Is, yeah, is exactly. It, no, we can, you know, you can actually do that. We do that here in the States. We use something called ISDN, mm -hmm. which allows you to actually tap into another studio, and they can actually record you in another city through another studio, which is really? just crazy. Wow. Um, and that's that's used for voiceover uh, quite a lot. Like a lot of the voice characters, they'll do things like that. Um, music's a little harder to do that way yeah. because there's a delay and it gets kind of confusing. But uh, they just more or less listened in. It wasn't really – well, and it wasn't important because between Arnie and I, we could handle musically what was happening. There wasn't a reason to yeah, it was just to take it farther. Hear, you know? It was just to let them hear it. Exactly. So there can be a part of it. And, they, you know, and then they would make comments. They would listen back and then we would send them files and they would be like, hey, can you try this or – you know, et cetera. But, you know, Naboo is so easy to please because obviously he's still kind of the hammer guy, <laughs> which means he gets to say, you know, the yay or nay on everything. And he's so easy to please. I mean, he pretty much likes everything I sing, which is really so he's awesome. So he's not a demanding author. Oh, not at all. Like, he's probably the easiest person I've ever worked for as far as, you know, because wow. you know, I've worked like, for a lot of people. His music, maybe it's the fact that he's used, like, to, to perform live because he has his own band, you know? Right. So maybe is a little less uh, like you, you could say perfectionist about the like the performance to eat every single element right. and instead is like more fond of a live performance. Oh, I think so. I think that has definitely something to do with it. And I think uh, and I think also his expectation like he again, he doesn't his goal isn't that you do exactly what he wrote. His goal is that you just bring yourself to it and. I do that. And that's one of the reasons I've had a successful career as a singer at this point is because even other projects that I've worked on, mm -hmm. aside from Final Fantasy, I always put my heart and soul into it. And I, and I, you know, like to think I do that pretty well. So that's where I think, you know, I think it's finding the right person is half, you know, it's more than half the battle to getting the performance you want because you already like what they do. You know what I mean? You're not having right. to start over from the beginning and say, oh, well, gee whiz, how do I manipulate her to do this? Or, you know, it's not like that. It's, it's, well, you know, you're a but... songwriter. So yes. would you be interested to, to actually write music for games? I would, I think it would be a lot of fun. I mean, there's, there's songs we're working on for this new record, I think would be great in, in a game, you know, cause they, I have a lot of those spiritual kind of stories in my music, as far as, you know, good versus evil and struggle and, you know, a lot of those same uh, themes. So I think my music would work great like that. I've, I've had some of my songs in American television shows and films. So it's not a big jump to think about using them in a video game mm -hmm. with a storyline because it's, you know, it's just a diff different format, but it's, you know, the same sort of thing, you know? So last I'd... question. <laughs> sure. <laughs> last question. It's probably the usual that you get asked a lot. Uh, do you have any advice for, for, uh, for, for girls or even guys that wants to you know uh, want to pursue the career you uh, you're quite well uh, on your way on well that's a good question you know so much of what happens in the music industry is out of your hands I mean it really is um, being connected to the right person at the right moment and that's something we a lot of us don't really have any control over I think I mean, the biggest thing that I've learned in my life is really understanding how God made me, what my gifts are, and developing those gifts to the best of my ability. And I think mm -hmm. if you are really committed and passionate about what you do and you really focus on that, I think, you know, doing what you love. My, my mom always used to say this, doing what you if you do what you love, you know, the success will always follow. The money will follow, you know, because... We can't buy our hearts, you know, people can't buy our hearts. They can pay for our time, but they can't, you know, they can't pay for our passion. You know, that's something we have to choose to give to something. And I think being true to yourself and, and following your passion is really important. And I think that's the first step. And then obviously there's a business side of this that's enormous. And that's stuff that, you know, I think going to college is really important. I think I'm so glad I have my degree. I mean, I don't necessarily need a college degree to do what I'm doing yeah. technically, but it's given me so many of the business skills that I need to really run my business successfully and to be able to um, keep going and keep evolving and keep changing because, you know, it's like any career now. You have to kind of be light on your feet. The business changes and what you can make money at something for a little while, but then, you know, everything changes and you have to kind of reinvent yourself and 
rethink your plan, you know, and I think being light on your feet is a real important uh, aspect of this too. So that's awesome. Well, thank you very much, Susan. And uh, <laughs> thank uh, you. I think I think our readers would love to would love to hear what you had to say. And uh, so again, thank you very much for taking the time to speak to us. And uh, thank you. And buy the single on iTunes, <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> and uh, to everyone to listen, thank you very much for listening. Uh, and uh, we'll hear from you soon. And I'm Giuseppe Vella from DualShockers.com with Susan Calloway. Uh, thank you very much, and bye. Thank you. See you later.